Scott Kilberg with VideoFoot.com here with another video for you on all things foot and ankle. Today I'm going to talk about perineal tendonitis. Now the perineal tendons are a group of two tendons that essentially run along uh, the course behind the outside of your ankle. They begin as uh, two different muscles in the back of the leg, more along the side, the outer side of the leg uh, in your calf. And then the tendons that are basically uh, attaching this muscle to the bones in your feet then begin to run around the outer side of the ankle. If you look at this foot model, you can see this is where the big toe is and this is the little toe. Well, on the side of the foot where the little toe sits, these tendons, and there's two of them, basically run underneath the ankle joint itself and then begin to split. One tendon, the, the longer tendon called the perineus longus, basically starts to split off and curve underneath the bottom of the foot uh, near a bone called the cuboid bone. The short tendon called the perineus brevis basically continues onward until finally it attaches to something called the styloid process or basically uh, the base of a bone called the fifth metatarsal. Uh, if you look at your foot and the outside of the foot, in the middle of the foot, this is the uh, sort of the bump that you can feel where the foot flares outward a little bit. Now these tendons are very important in that uh, they serve several different functions. Uh, in particular, uh, the function of the peritoneus brevis is important because it tends to act as a foil in order to stabilize the action of a much stronger muscle on the other side of the foot called the posterior tibial tendon. Essentially what this, uh, what this tendon does uh, is it helps the foot to roll outward and upward, almost like a flattening motion. Now, your foot naturally does this when you stand and walk in bare weight as you go through your walking cycle. Uh, but certain points during the walking cycle, the foot actually has to actively do this for you in order to continue to complete the normal uh, walking cycle. So this, um, this tendon is very important. Um, this tendon, unfortunately, can get irritated. Uh, or actually, both these tendons can become irritated uh, as a result of uh, a lot of different types of uh, problems that can occur during the course of normal walking. These problems are basically due to things like walking on uneven ground which causes your foot to kind of flex and roll inward a lot. And also any injury that forces your ankle to roll inward will often also injure this tendon as well. So due to the numerous uh, different issues that can create um, irritation of this tendon, tendonitis or inflammation of the tendon is not uncommon. Uh, once the tendon becomes strained or stressed or injured enough it will become inflamed. Um, it is also not uncommon during this tendonitis process for small tears to actually occur within the substance of the tendon itself. Now as this uh, tendonitis continues and progresses and uh, your activity continues and progresses without getting any help for it, um, it can become quite severe and also eventually can become quite debilitating. Um, it's very simple to treat this condition. Once you catch it uh, or, and you realize you have it and get treatment, uh, early interactive treatment to reduce the inflammation is usually very successful. That includes icing, that includes stabilizing the actual foot and ankle itself with a brace to reduce sort of the rolling uh, motion of the foot uh, in order to keep this tendon more stable and also includes anti-inflammatory medications to help, uh, to help decrease uh, the inflammation overall. And that allows the tendon time to kind of to start to heal. Um, if that's a, not enough and the tendonitis is a bit more advanced, uh, then physical therapy needs to be performed in order to try to more actively stimulate healing and to strengthen the, the muscle with which the tendon is attached to. Um, if those measures aren't successful and the tendonitis is pretty severe, um, you have one other option before having to consider surgery and that's basically immobilizing the foot either in a cast or a walking boot to basically stop all motion together. If that doesn't lead to healing, then <clears throat> surgery is the next uh, option, and surgery is generally successful in treating this condition. Uh, oftentimes, surgeons will go in and repair any tears um, to the tendon structure itself. Uh, the tendon can be uh, sort of strengthened and thickened by using uh, artificial grafts to help uh, the tendon become stronger and thicker and uh, to reduce the likelihood that uh, you know, the, the substance will become torn and irritated again by the normal course of of walking. Uh, and alternately, there's other technologies that can be used to try to stimulate internal healing um, within the tendon itself. Something called uh, radioablation is a newer technique that, that's being used for tendon repair in order to stimulate, the, uh, stimulate greater blood flow into the tendon to let the injured areas heal on their own. 
Uh, all of these measures are fairly successful and uh, the post-operative course, while somewhat restricted uh, initially, uh, generally tends to quickly lead to activity and letting people get back to doing the things they like to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Look for more videos on this website as well as others regarding all things foot and ankle, or you may check out my website at www.inpodiatrygroup.com. Thank you.